Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with Tell Fan TV. Back at you on the video, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos. And Lamar Jackson made a comment today, made something that uh, most face fans didn't want to see. He's kind of making it official. He has requested a trade from the Baltimore Ravens, all right? Now, we're going to get into it. He said as of, uh, in regards to his future plans, as of March 2nd, I requested a trade from the Ravens organization for which the Ravens has not been interested in meeting my value. And everyone that has met me or been around me know I love the game of football and my dreams to help a team win the Super Bowl. You all are great, but I had to make a business decision. That was best for my family and I. No matter how far I go, where my career takes me, I'll continue to be close to my fans of Baltimore, Flock Nation, and the entire state of Maryland. You'll see me again. All right, man. So let's talk about it. So first of all, it's obvious that the contract negotiations haven't gone smoothly, haven't gone consistently. Um, but you can see this as as time was building on that something wasn't right. All right, uh, I'm not going to yell, get too excited. You know, I got a baby girl in the back seat, so I'm just going to keep it real calm, mellow, chilled out. You can see something was broken, something was not right in the Ravens' contract negotiation with Lamar Jackson. Every time something new leaks out, he's getting on Twitter saying this and that about it. Um, when he started talking about the contract numbers, uh, 133 million guaranteed, um, that kind of was the signal of that it was close to the end, right? You can have hope, you can have optimism, but the fact that him and DaCosta had an agreement, we won't talk about contract, we won't talk about the contract, and he kind of confirmed it on Twitter, that wasn't a great sign, all right? Now, the second part is the trade request, okay? Uh, Eric DaCosta has said he doesn't hold players hostage. He said that with Hollywood, he said that in the past before Hollywood, so... Um, if Lamar Jackson truly wants to trade, they will trade Lamar Jackson. Now is this about getting the best offer for him? And it's unfortunate that the Ravens have to come to this, right? Um, I think Isaac Newsom said that, yeah, the Deshaun Watson thing through a wrench in the plans and things like that. Okay, cool, right? Uh, but I'm going after the same person I've always talked about when I, I've always mentioned when it came to these negotiations with Lamar Jackson. This is about Steve Bashotti. This is about him not wanting to be the second owner to set precedent of a fully guaranteed deal. That's all this is about. All right. The fact that he's willing to lose his franchise quarterback about it shows you that the owners show that this is bigger than just a contract. This is about the business of, of the NFL. This is about not having these players on deals with guaranteed contracts. All right. Now, look. I get what guaranteed contracts mean for the players, what it can mean for the salary cap. But if I'm looking at the Cleveland Browns right now, and they gave Deshaun Watson $230 million fully guaranteed, and also they have the ability to restructure his contract anytime they need to, that's something that the Ravens could have done. They've chosen not to do it. Bashadi has chosen not to be the second owner to set precedent. And maybe Lamar Jackson doesn't want a fully guaranteed deal because that's been out there as well. But they've chosen not to give him a high value contract without the if, ands, or buts in it. All right. You could say that he turned out $175 million, but really the number that he cares about is the 133, which is fully guaranteed as soon as he puts a pen to paper. They would not go higher than that number. It, it appears. All right. The 175 is a number that's contingent on him being on the roster the following season. And if in all likelihood, there's probably a 99% chance Lamar Jackson would have been on the roster. He would have got 175. But he doesn't view it that way. And that's fine. That's so that's fine. He's his own agent. He's his own man. If he wants to view it differently, he can do that. Um, this is about more organizationally in the fact that this is the best offensive player the Ravens have ever had. Okay? Ever. And he's going to walk out the door. Now, you can say they're going to get draft capital for him, and that's great. That's fine. Um... As far as Ravens go, quarterback goals in, in, in their history, right? We've had Joe Flacco, who was between, depending on the week, <laughs> below average, good, above average, all right? So he, he, he went all ranges. He was never elite except for that playoff run, all right? He went all ranges. Lamar Jackson, the lowest Lamar Jackson has been as, as far as a Ravens player is, he's had games where he's been average. But most of the time, Lamar Jackson is giving you good to great play and borderline elite play when you see uh, the 2019 season. Not, not even borderline, fully elite player when you see the, the 2019 season, okay? So he's never really dropped below an average player. He's always been good to great for the Ravens, always. He's had to carry the team on the back. He's been Superman. He's been a guy that he's been in a unique situation. He's had been the Ravens QB1 and RB1 while Greg Roman was here 
And now they want to put injury contingencies in his contract. Lamar Jackson appears to be above all things, a man of principle. All right. So for him, it seemed like it was simple as that. Y'all wanted me to do this, right, to help the team win. And he was for that because, like he says in his statement, he loves football. But when, I, when I'm asking to get paid market value for what I think of myself, you're telling me you cannot give that to me. That's uh, That's got to be a tough thing for Lamar Jackson to see. That's got to be a tough thing for him to, to accept. And I get that 100%. Um, the Ravens feel like they're making a business move. The owners are making a move right here. Now, whatever team Lamar Jackson goes to next, um, it'd be very, very interesting to see how they structure the contract or whatever, however it happens. Um, John Harbaugh had a press conference. It's, probably, it's happening right now, but it won't be happening by the time I release this video. But um, I had to cut the press conference off because obviously this move, this news is more important. This news is crazier. So if, if anybody knows what John Harbaugh said, y'all let me know. But I only caught the beginning. And pretty much Harbaugh was saying that uh, he believes that the contract talks between Eric DaCosta and Lamar Jackson are consistent. He believes that Lamar Jackson will be the Ravens quarterback next year. Um, that could be fool's goal. That could be blind optimism. That could just be him being the face in front of the media because he can't say what's really going on behind the scenes, right? All those things could be true. But um, and for me, I, I think Lamar Jackson means it, right? He's, he, he wants to trade, okay? This very well could be a... Um, the next step in the negotiation, hey, look, guys, you don't give me the card that you want, you got to trade me, right? Because that's always the logical next step. Uh, but the Ravens aren't budging. Lamar Jackson isn't budging. The whole point of giving Lamar Jackson that non-exclusive tag was to have other teams rush in, have Lamar Jackson sign the offer sheet, and have the Ravens do everything they can to match it. It hasn't happened. So now a move that was good by the Ravens, right? Because it saved them thirteen million dollars against the camp. That thirty-two versus forty-five million dollars, but it it was a move that got them nowhere in negotiations. They didn't gain any ground, any leadway. They're in the same spot as they were when they started negotiations before they franchise tagged them. So effectively, it did nothing for them, and that's tough. That's tough. I know a lot of people are going to blame Eric DaCosta for this. Eric DaCosta has a job to do with the wide receivers. That's an organizational thing that they have failed upon since the, the since 96, okay? So um, he has a job to do with that. To me, Eric DaCosta, I fully believe, and I still believe it, he wanted to pay Lamar Jackson. He did because you got to think about his reputation right now. He's going to be known as a general manager that traded away Lamar Jackson and the, the Ravens aren't successful after doing it. That's going to be a major black eye on his resume. It's no way around it. If Lamar Jackson goes somewhere else and wins the Super Bowl after being paid, it's going to be a major red flag on Eric DaCosta's resume. So I fully believe he wanted to pay Lamar Jackson. I do. But once again, it's not his money. He answers to Steve Bashadi upstairs. Bashadi made it clear last year at the owners' meeting, okay? When they talked about Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson, I always do that. Excuse me, Deshaun Watson and his fully guaranteed deal. We are not the Browns. This is not the precedent. Uh, just because the Browns did it doesn't mean we have to do it as well. Then he lied on Lamar Jackson. I talked about this before too. He said Lamar Jackson is so focused on playing football that he doesn't care about a contract right now. He wants to get us. He wants to win a Super Bowl to feel like he deserves a contract. If he was Super Bowl, he could ask for any contract he wants. Only for Lamar Jackson to show up to training camp or mandatory, mandatory OTAs, whichever one it was, and to say, no, I'm ready for a contract right now. I think I deserve that contract right now, actually. Uh, so, you know, we're working it out. Fully disputing what uh, uh, Bashadi had just said a couple weeks ago, a week ago, whatever it was, whatever the time frame lined up, okay? So, this comes down from the top of the organization. And at the top of the organization is Steve Bashadi. There's no other way to get around that. The fact that Lamar Jackson is requesting a trade from the Ravens has less to do with the organization and more to do with the guy who owns the team. Point blank, period. When Joe Flacco wanted his money, Steve Bashadi dragged his feet on that as well. Joe Flacco had to go had the greatest Super Bowl run ever and, and win a Super Bowl for that to happen, which actually ended up costing the Ravens money in the end. The same thing with this Lamar Jackson thing, all right? And people are going to say, well, after 2020, Lamar Jackson didn't want to negotiate. Cool, you could say that. If the Ravens make Lamar Jackson the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL, I bet you the negotiation, uh, it doesn't need to go any further. 
It happens. He signs the contract in 2020. We're done. We're not even having this discussion right now. We're not. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. Um, but the Ravens have failed and to retain Lamar Jackson as of right now. Right? Maybe, like I said, this is a negotiating tactic and the Ravens can get Lamar Jackson signed. But as of right now, it looks like he's on his way out the door. And I'm looking at Steve Bashad. Because now, this team is built to win now. We have a team that is built to win now without a quarterback. You can find all of the uh, stopgap bridge quarterbacks you want. Now the Ravens have to have a franchise quarterback, and they don't have one now. That's an issue. That's a major, major issue. Because now you might as well flip the team over to rebuilding. Because you're not just going to drop a quarterback in. And all the stopgap bridge quarterbacks are pretty much gone. Your Jimmy G's, your Brissett's, your Baker Mayfield's, whoever. They're not out there anymore. And I'm saying I didn't want those guys in the first place. But they're not even out there to even have a thought of being available. So the Ravens have once again, as I said this before, they've backed themselves into a corner with this Lamar Jackson thing. They've done it. And it's um it's sad. It's 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 sad, honestly, that it had to get to this point. Now, he said he made this trade request March 2nd. It is March 27th right now. So we're talking about a full three weeks ago, okay? Um, and nothing has progressed as far as trading him. All right. That could explain why Jim Ursay was in Baltimore yesterday. That could have been been for to, to get a trade process going along for the Indianapolis Colts. If the Ravens were able to do that and get up to four, whatever, I don't know. I'm just speculating here, okay? But the point being is, it's sad the Ravens have gotten to this point. The point is that the Ravens organization has failed Lamar Jackson pretty much um, consistently since 2019, all right? In terms of, ooh, in terms of wide receivers, this, this guy almost hit somebody. In terms of wide receivers, in terms of offensive game plans, in terms of keeping Greg Roman here for far, far too long. Um... There are numerous ways that you can spin this and try to say Lamar Jackson is greedy, this and that. He wants fair market value, all right? I'm always going to be pro player. That's just, that's just how I roll with it. That's how I rock. Um, this the situation is nothing but it's sad, all right? The best offensive player in Ravens franchise history wants out. And unless something changes drastically, he's going to get his request. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments, man. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos, man. It's Gabriel, another fan TV. I'm out.